The 1950s was a decade of breakthroughs for America. The first computer modem, the first transistor radio, and most of the transmission towers we rely on today for electric power were built in the 1950s. The life expectancy for this national network of towers was approximately 50 years. Our grandparents' grid system is way past its prime. It's unreliable, dirty, and expensive, and it can't handle the demands of the 21st century. It can't handle threats of cyber warfare. It can't handle extreme weather events. It can't ensure that critical facilities like hospitals stay functioning when the lights go out. One transmission failure can ripple through many communities. Our traditional grid system also fails to handle the increasing demand from new technology. Now is the time to reimagine our electric systems. One way to power into the future is with microgrids. Across the U.S., small-scale power networks called microgrids are emerging as the smart solution to our failing national grid system. By integrating multiple renewable power sources like solar, wind, and battery storage, microgrids can maximize efficiency and ensure uninterrupted power. What's more, these revolutionary systems can address climate change and help us transition from fossil fuels to clean energy without being disruptive. We need microgrids today because our grid is brittle and it needs to be brought into the 21st century where we're facing real climate risks, real disruptions. We have a pathway to clean energy and to distributed energy that microgrids enable. How does a microgrid differ from the central grid? Our current central electric grid is the interconnected wires and poles and power plants that deliver electricity to homes and businesses across the country. It is completely interdependent. If a transmission line in one community fails, other communities can suffer. A microgrid using locally sourced renewable energy serves a small geographic area like a campus or a neighborhood or a city. It can be either completely independent or work in sync with the current central electric grid. Eventually, a statewide and nationwide series of microgrids can replace our central, unreliable, and inefficient grid system. Because they rely on locally produced renewable energy, microgrids can run independently, sometimes called islanding, in the event of wildfires, floods, or hurricanes, or any other major disruption. A microgrid is basically a mini version of the larger grid, except that it's smarter, it's cleaner, it's more efficient and it's tailored to meet the local community's needs using their local resources. The thing about microgrids is that because they're deployed at the local level, they also provide high paying, good quality jobs in the communities that need them. According to a 2021 economic impact report by GuideHouse, microgrids powered by renewable energy will generate nearly 500,000 new jobs. 72 billion in GDP growth, and 146 billion in business sales by 2030. Microgrids also address one of the biggest inefficiencies of the centralized system, which is moving power from one place to another. With the central electric grid, significant power is lost when it has to travel miles and miles across transmission lines. Microgrids are more efficient because energy is created very close to where it is used, which, in addition to efficiency, also means savings to consumers. By some estimates, as much as 15% of the power generated by power plants is lost by the time that it reaches the consumer. Society pays the price for that in the form of higher energy costs and environmental harm. Where do microgrids exist today? The United States Department of Defense is the largest energy consumer in the nation and the largest petroleum consumer in the world. So it's not surprising with its mission to uphold national security that the military was an early and strong champion of microgrids, including a microgrid that is 100% clean energy in Hawaii. You can find microgrids in other critical areas where a power failure could spell catastrophe. There's another important human equity concern, which is that the impacts of the grid have not been distributed fairly. 
The old grid's power generating plants are located in some of the country's most vulnerable communities. During extreme weather, the health and safety burden falls disproportionately on the communities who are the first to have their power cut and the last to come back online. Renewable microgrids can help correct this disparity and ensure that all communities have access to reliable, affordable, pollution-free energy. Are people ready for microgrid technology? It turns out Democrats and Republicans can agree on one thing, microgrids, at least once they understand them. A recent bipartisan survey of voters found that once microgrids are explained, support for this technology grows. Nearly 8 in 10 Americans support the use of microgrids once they learn what they are and how they can solve the challenges we face. The next generation of political leaders from both sides of the aisle agree and are ready to make microgrids happen. We all want to build a better future. Reforming energy policy is not a political issue. It is a human health issue. It is an environmental issue. It is a national security issue. It's an economic issue. And so it is no surprise that microgrid technology enjoys the support of Americans across the political spectrum. We have the technology at hand to solve many problems at once with the creation of a modern electric grid using today's proven technologies. Learn more about how microgrids can benefit your community and how you can play a role in giving the breakthrough technology of our time its rightful place in history. Go to thinkmicrogrid.org.